Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our webinar this morning on testing methods for foundry baghouse dust. My name is Chris Scott with the TDJ Group, and I'll be giving the presentation today. Just a little housekeeping we'd like to take care of before we get started. Uh, there should be a dialog box in the upper right hand corner of your screen where you can type in questions for us as we go through the through the uh, the program you can post them either publicly or privately if you prefer to contact us privately after the webinar feel free to do so there will be a phone number and an email address where you can do that uh, we will be uh, i believe all of your microphones should be muted to keep any extraneous noise from being uh, generated throughout the webinar and i'd like to finish the webinar before we get to the questions if you don't mind so We'll, uh, we'll get through this. It should be only take uh, less than half an hour, and we will take the questions at the end. A little bit about who we are. We're uh, the TDJ Group is a manufacturer of dry powdered calcium silicate-based chemistries that are used for heavy metal uh, stabilization or fixation. Our corporate office is in Barrington, Illinois, in the Chicagoland area, and our production facility is in Peru, Illinois. Uh, more towards the center of the state on the main highways there for transportation, ease of transportation. Uh, we serve three primary markets, foundry metal casting, lead paint abatement, and soil remediation. Uh, we sell through distribution. Uh, we have dis distributors uh, spread out throughout the, uh, through North America. So uh, again, if there's some interest, uh, contact us after the fact and we can uh, discuss that with you. A little bit about me, my name is Chris Scott. I got a BA from Loyola University. I've been in the environmental field since 1992. Uh, I started as a hazardous response person for UPS when I was in college. And from there I moved on to uh, work at a uh, TSDF out in Nevada. And from there I worked at a, as a chemical coordinator. I fueled planes uh, at, at O'Hare Airport. And uh, I've been at, with the TDJ group since 2002. Uh, I'm the technical sales and service rep and the foundry account manager here and I've been an active member of the AFS EHS Air Quality Committee and the Water Quality and Waste Disposal Committee as well. What is baghouse dust? A lot of you are probably familiar with what baghouse dust is. For those who are not, uh, general overview, exhaust gases in particular are produced when you're melting scrap in a foundry process. Uh, the exhaust gases coming off of the furnace are collected in a bag house, which is basically a large air filter system. Uh, the filters in the bag house collect all the particulate matter, so all the, uh, the particulate gets collected, and then the filtered air is then released back into the atmosphere. Uh, heavy metals and iron, uh, like iron and zinc, are typically make up the significant amount of the dust itself, uh, but there's also heavy metals of, that are more of what we're talking about here as far as lead, cadmium, chromium. Typically, there's, there's small amounts of these metals in the scrap that's being produced, but because their melting points are so much lower, almost all of it gets into the baghouse itself, so it can create some problems. This is a simple schematic of a baghouse module, typical baghouse module. Dirty air comes in, it goes, travels up. The air goes through these, these filters that are set up. There's like a bag cage and then a filter that goes, goes over the bag. The air goes through the filter itself and then gets released out into the atmosphere. The dust builds up on the filter itself and then air is pulsed down to break it loose. It goes down to the bottom. Uh, where it is then collected in containers, super sacks, roll-offs, things of that nature. And now that's where what we're talking about here. What do we do with that dust once we've produced it? For the testing itself, there's two main tests that most people are aware of, TCLP and totals, which gives you the metal content. If you're not sure if you're waste has a heavy metal of concern you can send it off get total to find out if it even contains it tclp is what's measured that's what's regulated by the epa tclp test is how you determine whether a material is hazardous or not uh, they both measure the content 
of the of the heavy metals. However, totals measure the content of the sample itself. TCLP is what is measuring the leachable lead. The EPA is more not concerned about there being heavy metals within something that's being disposed of. They're concerned about it being uh, being mobile and being able to leach into the soil and then into the groundwater. They don't want the groundwater being being uh, poisoned with the with the lead. Uh, the test methods themselves, there are several different EPA is laid out in SW846, the test methods for different types of tests, what you do them for, what they're, what they, what needs to be done, how you go about it. Both samples, uh, no matter what you're testing, the samples are first digested. They got to be broken down into component, part, component parts and then they're analyzed for what's actually in there. For a totals test, I just, the digestion method is typically EPA method 3050. The analysis method for both is actually 6010, which measures the actual metals themselves. So 3050 will break it down. It uses a nitric acid and hydrogen peroxide to break down the sample uh, to its component parts. And then that, what the broken down part is then measured with 6010, which is an ICP, an inductive coupling plasma uh, machine that reads elements of that sample itself, of that digested sample. TCLP is a little bit different method because it's going to be an aqueous sample and the fact that it's going to be tumbled in water, um, the EPA method is 3010. The meat and potato is basically the TCLP is that it's the, the method 1311. The prep sample is then tumbled in an, in an acidic extraction fluid 20 times the weight of the sample. It's tumbled for 19 hours. So they break down the sample, they put it into a beaker with 20 times its weight, so 100 gram sample, typically would be about two liters of an acidic extraction fluid, and it's tumbled for 19 hours. And then the ICP and method 6010 is used to measure the heavy metals in the leachate itself. For those who aren't aware, I mean, this is probably, again, the meat and potatoes of the TCLP test. Uh, this is the rotary agitator. Basically, the samples are put onto this, this piece of, of, of equipment, then the sample is added to the beaker, then you have the 20 times the weight of the extraction fluid, and this machine will just turn these bottles over and over for 19 hours when they, the sample will then be prepped when they come in, and they'll run it with the 6010, method 6010, to get the actual readings out of the leachate itself. Again, what they're trying to find out is how much mobile lead uh, cadmium, different types of metals might be in there. The TCLP is what's used for determining if a waste is characteristically hazardous. So uh, there's, you can do totals, you can do different types of leaching tests, but in order, basically this is the test that's required by EPA to determine if a waste is hazardous or non-hazardous for disposal uh, for heavy metals. TCLP is designed to simulate the leaching a waste will undergo if disposed of in a, in a landfill. Uh, it estimates the mobility of specific inorganic and organic contaminants for solid, liquid, and multiphasic waste. Again, it's it's not the amount, it's the mobility of the material to leach into the water around it and then obviously into the groundwater. Uh, when make, making a waste determination for the toxicity characteristic, TCLP is the only appropriate analytical method to run. Units of measure, uh, this can cause a little bit of confusion with some people. We get calls periodically with people call and say that they've got a, a very high reading, they're concerned about it, they're not sure what might have happened, and it turns out what they're looking at is a total result and not a TCLP. Uh, labs used to be a lot more varied in how they reported these, but now it's gotten to the point where everybody's kind of on board. Uh, sort of like uh, MSDSs and SDSs have now gotten put into a particular format. Most of these labs are conforming to a specific format. Uh, the units of measure for totals are supposed to be reported in milligrams per kilogram. Uh, TCLP are always reported in milligrams per liter because again you're measuring the leachate not the not the solid uh, itself. 
both units are equal to parts per million. So milligrams per kilogram, milligrams per liter, or, or ppm. Um, a lot of labs are not using ppm anymore. They're being specific about the milligrams per kilogram, milligrams per liter. Some labs have report totals in percent, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's easy, easily converted to ppm. You just move the decimal point four positions to the right, so 1.6 would be 16,000 ppm. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but again, I think most, most of the time you're going to see milligrams per kilogram or milligrams per liter. Micrograms is something we've run into periodically. Some labs do a lot of testing for very low amounts of materials, uh, whether it's for research or something along those lines. Lines We've seen uh, reports come out in micrograms per, per kilogram, micrograms per liter. It's very concerning because it's a thousand times higher than a parts per million. So one milligram per kilogram would come out as a thousand uh, micrograms per kilogram. So that's one thing. And that's, you can tell the, the micrograms is UG versus uh, the MG. Units of measure, again, this is, this is taken from a, a uh, a analy analytical report that we got uh, for one of our customers. You can see that these are the different analytes that they're testing for, the different uh, elements that they're testing for. Over here you've got the results themselves, so the results of the testing. These are totals, again, 60-10, 60-10. Uh, Test America is actually very good about spe specifying TCLP. Not everybody does that because uh, basically you know, remember these reports here are using 6010. They're not putting in that it ran 1311 in order to get to this this point here. So uh, it should be on the report. It just sometimes it's not always obvious where they had that. Over here again, we got the units milligrams per kilogram versus milligrams per liter. One other thing I'll point out is the is the reporting limits. Every every lab has a limit for the testing that they're doing. Generally, it depends upon the quality of the instruments themselves, about how low they can go. As you can see, uh, the reporting limits for totals are typically a little bit higher. You're generally talking about much higher results, so they're not as concerned about getting way down. TCLP themselves, you can see they're much lower, 0 0.050, 0 0.50, 0 0.025. These are pretty low, uh, but again, regulatory limits for these, you know, are much higher. So, you know, five milligrams per liter, one milligrams per liter. Uh, cadmium's one milligram per liter, and the result is obviously much below the detection limit itself. So, uh, one other thing I'll point out is on the methods. Sometimes you'll see a letter behind this, A, B, C, or D. Typically what those are is there are updates that are put to the, the uh, method itself. 99.9% .9 of the time that update is typically that there's better equipment, newer equipment that maybe has better, lower uh, reporting limits and things like that. Um, the method itself is the same. The equipment's a little bit different. The machines that they use are a little bit different and those are specified within that letter uh, at, the, at the end of the, the method number. Regulatory limits, we talked a little bit about that a second ago. Um, arsenic, chromium, lead, and silver are all five milligrams per liter. Anything at five or above is considered hazardous. Um, anything below that is considered non-hazardous uh, for disposal. Uh, barium's obviously a little bit higher. It's not a very common metal and it's fairly easily uh, stabilized, but it also has less of the toxicity of some of these others, so it's not as much of a concern as, say, cadmium uh, or obviously mercury. This slide is a comparison of a few of the different leaching methods. Obviously, TCLP is the most important. That's the one where you're determining whether a waste is hazardous or not. Um, SPLP was de was developed as a uh, test for landfills to look at. Uh, a couple of different leaching solutions, basically depending on whether you're east or west of the of the Mississippi, uh, and it's supposed to uh, 
uh, simulate acid rain exposure for the landfills. MEP is an interesting one, and actually we've had some experience with that where some of the uh, other uh, public agencies, EPA, Army Corps of Engineers, Federal Highway Administration, had actually run this test on our materials for to determine their long-term uh, stability, which was all very successful. But what the MEP is basically a TCLP extraction followed by nine more extractions. And the idea behind that is some people have talked about uh, or there's a common thing where something called buffering, where a lot of these metals are amphoteric, meaning that they leach at high and low pHs. And if you can stabilize the pH, you can get a pass on a TCLP test. So there are some materials out there that are more about um, uh, buffering the material to pass the test, whether it's fooling it or whatever it might be for TCLP. But this MEP test uh, takes that out because every extraction after that, again, you're tumbling an acid every time for 10 full extractions. Um, so any buffering is eliminated right away uh, within the first couple of, uh, of extractions. So that's something if, if you want to prove the efficiency of a material for long-term stability, this is a great method for doing that. But again, it's not anything from a regulatory standpoint. Passing an MVP isn't, isn't uh, something you have to do in order to characterize your waste. Uh, there's again we talked about the totals and the TCLPs. TCLP is what you need to determine your your as we've said repeatedly is what you need for characterizing your waste as hazardous or not. Totals I think uh, we think are a important test for uh, for a couple of different reasons. You can establish a baseline uh, and monitor changes in the waste stream or scrap changes in the in the system. We recommend that uh, totals are done. It's a fairly cheap test typically 10 bucks uh, per metal. Um, and it, it helps you if you can record that in a spreadsheet over a period of time. It's always something you can go back and see the changes that have happened to the uh, to your system, whether it's changes in the scrap, changes in the melt process, changes in the furnace itself, you know, and the different cokes and things like that that are used in the process. Uh, it helps you to uh, to uh, see how that's affecting everything on the back end of the system. Obviously, from a regulatory standpoint, that's that's important for you to, uh, to keep an eye on. Appreciate your time. Uh, I'll be happy to uh, answer any of the questions uh, at this point. Again, um, uh, if you have questions that you'd like to ask, more directly, the, the number is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, the email address, tdjblastdocs.com, will come right to me, and I can get back to you as well. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Evan, and we'll see what we need to do from here.